In this video, I'm going to go over using the exposure settings for the Nikon D3400. For my other videos about using this camera, see the description below. In the green auto mode, the camera looks after all the exposure settings automatically and no adjustments are possible. Let me show you the what and why of taking control of the settings. Those settings are the P, A, S and M positions on the dial. In those positions, you can take control of the meter, which judges the exposure. Press menu and scroll through the camera settings to metering. There are three options, matrix, which measures the whole scene, center, which gives preference to the center, and spot, which gives preference to the current focus point, which can be moved using the multi-selector. When the dial is set to S, the shutter speed is adjusted. That's the amount of time, expressed in fractions of a second, that the camera lets light onto the sensor. Turn the top dial. Shutter speed is the far left circle on the display, the cryptic number on the far left bottom of the viewfinder, or in LV mode on the bottom left of the screen. When shooting a dark scene, it takes longer to get enough light, a smaller number. When the action is fast, a larger number can freeze the movement. While we're adjusting the shutter, the D3400 is making automatic adjustments to the aperture in the center and the ISO on the right. More about those in a minute. For most situations, I would recommend shooting in the 125 to 200 range. Under 1 60th, you'll need a tripod. Speeds slower than that are used to blur water or other movement. To freeze sports action, go to 500 or higher. In S mode, the D3400 sets the aperture to compensate for the manually set shutter speed. The opposite happens in A mode, which adjusts the aperture, the size of the lens opening. The same dial now sets the F number displayed to the right of the shutter speed in the viewfinder, LCD, and in LV mode. A larger aperture, represented by a smaller F number, lets in more light but has a smaller depth of field. Fewer things are in focus from close to far away. This helps create a blurred background. Here's the image at f5.6, again at f36. A smaller aperture, as indicated by a larger f number, lets in less light, but a larger amount of distance from near to far is in focus. There's no number to remember, except that the smallest F number provides the best defocus effect. The kit lens can open to F3.5, but other lenses designed for portrait shooting can open to F1.8 or larger. Also note that as it zooms, the kit lens's aperture closes to F5.6. Better lenses don't close the aperture when zooming. In A, the camera adjusts the shutter speed to compensate. Like green auto, P mode automatically sets both the aperture and the shutter speed, but with a twist. Turn the dial to see other shutter aperture combinations that will work. The star beside the P indicates program shift mode. In P, A, and S mode, a second control can adjust overall brightness. Press the plus minus button behind the shutter and turn the dial. It provides up to five stops of adjustment. Each stop below reduces the light by half, up doubles it. In LV mode, the effect is visible on the screen, but not the viewfinder. For the adventurous, both aperture and shutter can be controlled by turning the dial to M. But first, let me explain ISO. The shutter and the aperture control how much light arrives at the sensor. ISO controls the sensor's sensitivity. A higher ISO means that the sensor reacts more quickly, but there's a trade-off. Higher ISOs also increase noise in the image, random color dots or grain, particularly if you look closely. Ideally, we want to use the lowest ISO possible. The menu sets the ISO. 
Auto ISO is on by default. This means that if the camera feels it won't get enough light with the current setting, it will adjust the ISO to compensate. I'm turning it off for a minute. ISO sensitivity can be set from 100 to 25,600. Let's start at ISO 100. Now, setting the exposure requires a meter, which is displayed as a graph at the bottom right of the LV or bottom center of the status screen. The blips to the left shows the scene is way underexposed. Turning the dial adjusts the shutter speed. To get the meter to its center point, shutter speed is down to 1 30th of a second with an f6.3 aperture. Thankfully, I'm using a tripod. Note that the viewfinder mode and LV mode don't exactly agree. Although the scene hasn't changed, LV is happier at 1 1 25th. And remember that the screen or viewfinder can be deceiving. Even though the preview looks properly exposed, the image may not be. I keep my eye on the meter and check the playback. Going back to the menu, to set the ISO to 25.6, the shutter speed is 1 4,000th, its fastest, and still overexposed. Press the plus minus to set the aperture to f16. Increasing the ISO makes the image increasingly mushy and noisy. I don't mind up to about 6400, but above that I want to be making an explicit decision. Back to auto ISO. After deciding I don't want it higher than 6400, I'm setting the maximum sensitivity to that. For minimum shutter speed, I set 1 60th, and the default ISO at 100. When auto ISO is on, the display shows ISO A. When it's in action, it flashes. Final quick tip. Press the I key, bottom left, to access a quick menu to change the meter mode the ISO and other settings. And it's available on the LCD and in LV mode. I've made several videos to help you master the D3400. They're listed in the description below. Uh, thanks for watching. Please use the comments area below to ask questions. I do reply to all civil and relevant comments.